When we address the lines of Nazca, we tend to forget that this gigantic enclave goes way beyond the territory surrounding the small yet charming town of Nazca. After having completed the most complete schematics in the history of the lines of Nazca, blueprints requested by Nuria Sam, director of UNESCO, Salvador Nazca has collected information about a vast area of 2,500 square kilometers. In these schematics, one could see the extension, the real extension of the lines of Nazca. Beyond imaginable, and despite the enormous size that each of these structures has, the actual amount of them that there are remains a challenge, one that even these pre-Inca people had to face. What is more, uh, you might be surprised to learn that most notoriously known geoglyphs, such as the spider, the monkey, the hummingbird, and the alcatraz, which we have addressed in previous videos, and many other of the most relevant structures are not found in the surroundings of Nazca. In actuality, these structures and geoglyphs are found in the valley of Estudiantes and El Ingenio, which are settlements situated 25 kilometers away from Nazca. Interesting, don't you think? But hold on, because there's more. If we take these two settlements as pivots for our maps, we can find that the famous lines of Nazca lie to the west, east, west, and south. Starting north, uh, we find towns like Palpa, Rio Grande, uh, Santa Cruz, and Chillo, which are enclaves rich in geoglyphs and structures, being the gigantic arrows, the undisputed protagonists, first due to their abundance, but especially due to their design accuracy. Here we can also find the so often wrongly called cut hills. Uh, these hills we will refer to uh, in future videos, so we can clarify that they were never cut or flattened in their summit by any alien spaceship. But let us continue with this region. In a more irregular terrain than that of the central plains, we can find geoglyphs of people, animals, a few spirals, and, as we've mentioned, massive arrows. But on the contrary, uh, those gargantuan rectangles we have already addressed also in the last video are nowhere to be found, uh, except for one single gigantic agrupation of structures south of Alta, where the straight line of 60 meters wide and 2 kilometers long makes its appearance. Something incredible, actually, considering the technology available back in those days. We shall talk more about these uh, secrets and, and all that it hides in future videos, especially about the regions of Palpa and Rio Grande, which deserve their own videos themselves. Way west, beyond the hypothetical center we have addressed as the central plains, we can find the settlements of San Juan, Sanguillo, Lacra, Aguasalada, and Coyungo. In the whereabouts of San Juan, Sanguillo, and Lacra, we can find a very good amount of geoglyphs uh, shaped as squares or rectangles. The most famous one is known as the Solar Calendar, and according to popular thought, uh, it helped this amazing civilization know when the time was right for sowing and harvesting alike. And despite this interpretation, the fact that there we can find some of the largest concentrations of geoglyphs has made our team consider if there is a possible correlation between the shapes of this region in particular. But there's still a lack of consensus. There are also great structures, combinations of arrows with gigantic rectangles, which we can certainly find in there. Only 10 kilometers to the south, next to the settlement of Aguasalada, the arrows are way less noticeable. They are much more narrow and they are not as deep. As for the orography, it is also different, as the slopes are not so pronounced and the geoglyphs appear to be scattered all over the place. Despite this, they are numerous, and spiral formations appear to be very common. In fact, we can say that these are the regional protagonists. If there is any direct link between this region and the spirals, it is not so evident, as we can also find them in different areas, in different ranges. But it is likely, however, that there is a link between these spirals and water. But that's something that we will explain in future videos. These formations are intimately connected to the central plains through extensive lines that can reach up to 20 kilometers in length. That's a very curious fact, isn't it? You will soon know the reasons behind this strange connection between these two very distant territories. 13 kilometers west of Aguasalada, the Queen of Spirals, we find Coyungo, an expanse containing arrows and kilometric rectangles. Interestingly, our team found barely any geoglyphs in this expanse. Um, the erosion of water and the creation of new farmland are possibly to blame for this absence. These structures appear forlorn, forsaken by their own makers even before the lines of the central plains. What we could find, though, are suspicious ruins of ancient buildings and constructions gone, 
whose mystery only various stubborn archaeologists could possibly unveil. We now leave Coyungo and move towards south, where we can find the settlements of Quemado and La Japana. La Japana is especially interesting, as only three kilometers away from it, we can find the one and only Pyramid of Kawai, which was built by the Nazcan people and possibly served as the center and capital of their vast and mysterious empire. To the south of the pyramid, we find some of the most formidable agrupations of arrows and rectangles that we have found so far. These are hardly perceptible for satellites. Uh, they are half erased due to runoffs, and their discovery meant one huge surprise for our team and other researchers. The terrain orography made it difficult to build such structures, and the prospect of the realization of such magnificent work sounded complex, if not impossible. But the truth is that there they were with thick lateral walls built with meticulous straightness. And we end this magnificent trip moving 10 kilometers to the east, arriving at last, where else, to our famous and beloved castle. Surrounded by the settlements of Okunaya and Sokos, we can appreciate beautiful formations of arrows, lines and geoglyphs. Here is where we find the well-known whale. But here is one last surprise. As these geoglyphs and some of the best formations are created next to Okungaya and not Nazca. The truth is that Nazca, rather unfairly, has become the protagonist of these enigmatic lines of Nazca. As there are only a handful of formations, arrows and figures around this town. Despite their gorgeousness and remaining in an excellent state of conservation, both their size and their numbers are rather underwhelming, especially if we compare them to the other ones. Pretty much all these previously mentioned settlements possess bigger and more plentiful structures than Nazca itself. Surprised? Let us know in the comments. And we would also like to ask you one trick question. Why do you think this confusion might have happened? What do you think led the world to believe that these lines are indeed in Nazca? Perhaps the answer to this question is way less complicated than you think. And now, smash the like button if you've liked the video, subscribe if you please, and don't forget to hit the bell so you're aware of future episodes. Each of them will take you closer and closer to the answer to the greatest question of all. What are the lines of Nazca? This is Alberto Scudero, representing Carlos Enrique Hermida, and this has been Salvarla. Until the next time. Solo en YouTube.